is Acts chapter number one, starting with verse number 12. Amen. It's Acts chapter number one, starting with verse number 12. You will see these words are something very similar. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. And when they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. And here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer. Along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. During this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. Brothers, he said, the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided those who arrested Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit, speaking through King David. Judas was one of us and shared in the ministry with us. Judas had bought a field with the money he received for his treachery. Falling head first there, his body split open, spilling out all his intestines. The news of his death spread to all the people of Jerusalem, and they gave the place the Aramaic name Akadama, which means field of blood. Peter continued, this was written in the book of Psalms where it says, let his home become desolate with no one living in it. It also says, let someone else take his position. So now we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. From the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us. Whoever is chosen would join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Basabas, also known as Justice, mm -hmm. and Matthias. Then they all prayed, O oh Lord, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in this ministry, for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other 11. Okay. And for a sermon topic uh, titled this morning, I want to preach from the subject, voting is much more than just casting lots. <laughs> Voting is much more than just casting lots. Mm -hmm. The first chapter of Acts gives us the greetings to Theophilus. And if you're like me, you may ask, who is Theophilus? Who is Theophilus? Mm -hmm. What made him so important that he received a greeting at the beginning of the very book of Acts? Well, the fact is that we really do not know who Theophilus is, which is why there are several different theories as to who he might be. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much evidence there may, or how much evidence there may not be mm -hmm. for each theory, the simple fact is we don't know who Theophilus was because the Bible don't tell us who he was. Mm -hmm. But the name Theophilus literally means loved by God. All right. Okay. And it carries the idea of being a friend of God. That's why this has led some to believe that Theophilus is just a generic title that applies to all Christians. However, from the context of Luke's and at, it seems clear that Luke is writing to a specific individual. Mm -hmm. 
even though his message is also intended for all Christians in all centuries. Mm -hmm. So after we have the greeting of Theophilus, verses four through eight pretty much details the promise of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said that would be upon us. And if you look at verses nine through 11, you see how it details Jesus ascending into heaven. Mm -hmm. And now, somebody say now. And now. Yeah. And now we arrive to the point of our scripture that was read, which details the selection between Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Now the Bible, the Bible don't give any more details on who these two men were, except they met the qualifications mm -hmm. of being male and being with Jesus since the beginning of his ministry. Mm -hmm. Those were the only requirements that were given that they need to have to be male and to have been with Jesus since the very beginning of his ministry. I find it interesting that the Catholic Church, when selecting a new pope, summons the College of Cardinals to Rome and their responsibility is to choose the next pope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The cardinals are the most senior officials of the Catholic Church leadership. And currently there are over 200 cardinals from 69 countries with 120, the same number that was in the upper room of them able to elect the next pope. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's ironic to that, but I thought it was interesting to note yeah, yeah. that only 120 can vote in the election of a new pope, just mm -hmm. like the 120 that was in the upper room. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the Catholic Church, when voting for a new pope, two-thirds of the votes are needed, and then they would send smoke signals from the Sistine Chapel to communicate if a pope has been selected. If you see black smoke, they're still voting. They're still trying to decide. They're still trying to come up. And if you see white smoke, that lets us know a new pope has indeed been selected. Yes. As Protestants, we don't select a pope. Mm -hmm. But many church denominational bodies have similar ways of selecting their church senior leadership in the name of bishop and or apostles or what other titles they may use. Yeah. Yeah. And in most denominations, especially connected denominations like the Methodists, Presbyterians, and things like that, most require a candidate to be an active ordained elder in good standing to be elected as a bishop or an apostle. Mm -hmm. Now, I will parenthetically pause and say those are the requirements, but so much more is needed. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An eligible candidate must also have at least four years or uh, a full term to serve before reaching the mandatory retirement age that has been set by that particular body. Now, how many of you know that casting lots is still taking place even today? Mm -hmm. Casting lots. That title has always interested me when I would read that in the Bible and I would hear stories and sermons about casting lots. Because casting lots is when an outcome is determined by means that normally would be considered random. Such as in the situation we find here in the pulling or the drawing of straws. Mm -hmm. Growing up as a kid in the streets of the city of Atlanta, we had impartial and arbitrary ways for making decisions as well. <laughs> How many of you remember paper, scissor, rock? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's casting lots. How many of y'all remember frog? When you throw your hand behind your back, uh -huh. back boom, throw out yeah. the odd or even number. Yeah. That's casting lots. Uh -huh. And if you were a basketball player like Johnny and myself, what we would do to start a game is do or die. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's when someone goes and get ready to attempt a free throw. And you say, do or die. And what do is, if they make it, that means you get to shoot and you go back and forth until one miss. Mm -hmm. If you say die, you are banking on the fact that they go miss it and you automatically get the ball. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're a spades player. Mm -hmm. And before you start the initial deal, you pass the cards around. Whoever had the highest card gets the initial deal. Mm -hmm. That's casting lots. Or maybe you're a crap player and you roll and throw dice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you have to, what they call the come out roll. <laughs> now, I know we as church people, we don't know about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Got some stuff that, that <laughs> came across my pericardial thoughts. Uh -huh. <laughs> but in coming out, that's when you get the dice and you shake them. And some people, I've been told, they blow them. Some say, baby, need a new pair of shoes. Rick got to pay them, whatever they say, <laughs> to make sure that this casting of lot roll into their favor. You are hoping for a seven or an 11 <laughs> in the cut out roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a two a three, a 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that establishes the point and that's part of the casting of lots as well. Mm -hmm. And my favorite casting of lots is the coin toss. Mm -hmm. Where it's either heads or tail. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I had, the, I had the misbelief for a long time until it was brought to my attention by my loving daughter and wife <laughs> on, the, on the skill set of the coin toss. Considering how random a coin toss is, I thought I had a skill set in the coin toss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my skill set was this, always choose heads. Mm -hmm. Because for some reason, I don't know if I was taught or if I made it up, but I was up under the belief that the coin would land on heads more than it would land on tails. Mm -hmm. And I even had a statistic that was either made up by me or I heard from somewhere that if you toss a coin 10 times, seven out of the 10 times, it would land on heads. Mm -hmm. Now, I can honestly say right now, I don't remember why I got that thought process from, but it was a part of my thought process for a long time and when I communicated that to my loving daughter and my loving wife, they didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, in her infinite wisdom, suggested that I get a coin to prove it. Mm. So what did I do? I went, got the coin, got and then I flipped. <laughs> and I flipped. And I flipped. And after I got it 10 times, it wasn't 7 out of 10 times head, like I thought it should have been. Mm -hmm. And my loving wife said, that's why it's random. Mm -hmm. It's two. It could be head or tail. It's a 50-50 chance that it will land on head or tail. Mm -hmm. That brings me to the point of wondering why Matthias gets chosen to become the 12th apostle. Yeah, yeah. We have a man by the name of Joseph, also known as Basabas and Justice. And we have a man by the name of Matthias. And if you heard the right Reverend Tisa Cherie just did, she just told you my punchline. Maybe he had too many names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he should have just had one name. One name. Yeah. But Acts of the Apostle in chapter one recounts the fact that they cast lots to decide who would rank among the 12. So did Peter and the early church leave this decision up to chance? Was it blind luck that placed Matthias as an apostle? Mm -hmm. Many think that this is just another example of how the churches leave important decisions up to random experiences and illogical conceptions even today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this was no meaningless task. Casting lots was a tradition that has its roots in several, several locations in the Bible, including the life of King Saul. Casting lots was seen 
as an impartial way of making a difficult decision that portrayed the will of God coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. It also ensured that arguments would not occur once the winner was awarded, asking for a recount <laughs> uh, to count the ballots again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, this was a tradition that was recognized as bringing about God's will, and it was seen as a totally fair decision-making process. <clears throat> The biblical roots, the biblical roots of casting lots is important. But the words that are spoken by Peter and the other apostles before they cast lot is the most pivotal, the most pivotal part of the process. And if you remember verse 24, it says, then they all prayed. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, you know every heart. Every heart. Thank you, God. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in this ministry. Uh -huh. For Judas deserted us and gone where he belongs. And I have to pause right there. Uh -huh. For these words in this text in Acts, the first chapter says, as Judas has gone where he belongs. Mm -hmm. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other 11. How many of you know that we should always pray and pray without ceasing? Mm -hmm. yes. The other 11 were called by name by Jesus himself. Jesus the Christ looked them in the eyes before he asked them to leave everything behind their lives and follow him. An important detail from each account of the commissioning of the apostles in the gospel says so, that Jesus summoned them to himself. And we see the disciples desire to replace Judas in a similar form as they use the divine mission bestowed upon them by Jesus to call another apostle. They make the final decision by calling upon Jesus in prayer with the words, Jesus, you know the hearts of all. So he would guide and hand select someone who will bring the good news to the ends of the world. Now, we don't know much else about Matthias besides what we have here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we know he only had one name that they knew him by. <laughs> right. He didn't have all these other aliases that might have been known. <sighs> the true lesson from the life of Matthias is what the disciples do before his selection is made. They prayed. They prayed. Mm -hmm. They prayed. Yes. They prayed. Yes. They prayed. Mm -hmm. We should pray. Yes, That's it. Yeah. Prayer is the foundation. And prayer is the starting point of every decision in the life of Christians. I hope it is. Yeah. It's the starting point and it should be the focus point of every decision a Christian and the church should make. Because when we lead with our foot forward and our hearts lifted to God, God will always exhibit his will to his people. Mm -hmm. And the casting of lots is a secondary detail compared to the detail about prayer in the decision-making process. I share with y'all all the different forms I grew up with on casting lots. But how many of you know a lot of those casting lots that we did had prayer to initiate them as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen people get some dice and, and pray that they number 
fail. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you about the biggest casting of lot that we're faced with today. Mm -hmm. And it's worth 1.9 billion right now. <laughs> and there are those who are casting this lot by praying to God, if God bless me with this 1.9 billion. Yeah, yeah. I would give a tithe to the church. You lying. Mm -hmm. I will <laughs> take care of my family. You lying. I will make sure that the hungry people have food. You lying. You know, we start praying when we cast lots, and God knows the heart mm -hmm. and soul of all of us. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't been doing it now, if you're not already tithing, and if you're not already giving, if you're not already helping people, what make you think you gonna do it just because you have some extra money? Mm -hmm. God knows the heart. Yeah, yeah. That's the reason a lot of us pastors and preachers now we know that we don't have to beat people aside the head about giving, mm -hmm. about what they should give and how much they should give. Most people now know how to read, and most yeah. people read the Bible even if they don't tell you. But they know what's there. So people will pray before casting of lots. And often, and we have to realize this too, often we already know what we should do. Yeah, yeah. I say this because we all know that Tuesday is election day. Yeah. yeah. And maybe many of you have casted your lot already. In the election booth at your precinct. But did you pray first? Did you pray before you punch? Mm. Or did you just talk about how terrible the candidates were? Mm. How you so tired of the robocalls, the text messages, the signs that people have in their yard, the people knocking on your door, the lies they're telling on each other on TV, on the commercial. Mm. Did you pray before you punch? Mm -hmm. And if you hadn't voted yet, will you pray before you punch on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And if you're not voting, did you pray and God to told you not to vote? Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you pray before you told somebody else who to vote for or who not to vote for? Did you pray for whoever might win, that they might lead with godly wisdom That's and it. godly yeah. love. Yeah. Did you pray for those who lots had already been casted and who are already in office ruling and leading the nation right now? Mm. We have to understand the importance of not just casting lots. That's the easy part. Mm -hmm. But what the disciples showed us, what Peter said when he stood up was, Lord, you know the hearts. Mm -hmm. And isn't that so amazing that God really knows our heart? No matter what you do when you go into that booth and that sheet or that curtain closed on you, only you know what you're doing in there. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. But I wonder how many people really pray before they vote or pray before they decide who they go vote for. Or do they just count on the commercials, count on the bumper stickers, the yard mm -hmm. sign, or who they voted for in the past, uh, who they voted for because of a certain party they belong to, uh, who they voted for because of who they've always voted for, uh, because their mom and dad said vote for this person, or uh, because your neighbor said vote for this. Are we praying? Are we praying? Voting is much more than just casting lots, even mm -hmm. if the choices are both bad. Yeah, yeah. It seems like you don't want neither of them. Mm -hmm. We must pray because we don't know what God has in store for who may lead or who may not lead us. Yes. I want us all to be conscious. I want us all to have the heart to pray before we punch at the ballot going forward. Yes, Lord. You know, when I think about the whole casting of lots, and for those who pray before in order to them, for them to receive Matthias, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for those who pray for the candidates that we are praying for. And, you know, I'm amazed about people when it comes to prayer. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever had the opportunity to have a decision and uh, have an incident to happen and someone told you, I'm praying for you about that? Mm -hmm. How many of you know that for some, that's the only prayer you're getting about that? That they told you, I'm praying about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, unfortunately, even in the body of Christ, even Christian, even those of us who belong to the church, a lot of times they don't follow up with their prayer. When people say that they're praying, trust that that might be all you're getting, their words saying that I'm praying. Mm -hmm. But if you would ask them, what are you praying for about me? Most might not be able to tell you because they didn't pray. Yeah. They just told you they were praying because it sounded comforting. Mm -hmm. It sounded like the Christian thing to say. It sounded like maybe you know something about the Lord. But in actuality, a lot of times, people don't follow through and pray for people like they said they would. Mm -hmm. So I want us to learn to when we tell somebody that we're going to pray for them, yeah. let's do it right then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It don't have to be a full decalogue type prayer. It don't have to be an Apostle Creed type of prayer. Mm -hmm. It could just be, Lord, let your will be done in the life of whoever it is need the prayer right now that you said you will pray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God knows the heart. God don't need all this soliloquy of words that we like to let people know that we know about praying. Mm -hmm. We don't have to quote every scripture in the Bible when we're praying. We don't have to say all the words that we hear the elders and the deacons and the leaders of the church say on Sunday morning. Chances are that's not their Monday through Saturday prayer anyway. Yeah, yeah. So when we pray, we must pray with an honest and sincere heart because the Lord already knows what's needed. Yes, yes. The prayer is for us to make sure that our connection with the Lord is strengthened through our communication. Yes, Lord. So when we say we are praying that the right person get selected, when we say we are praying for someone who's getting ready to have a medical procedure, when we say we are praying for someone who's searching for a new job, when we say we are praying for someone to meet the person that God has for them in their life, do it then. Yeah. And then follow up and do it some more after that. Pray and pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. For the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Man and woman should always pray. Especially if you're a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Especially those of us who say we love the Lord. So this Tuesday... Yes, a lot of people know it as election day. Mm -hmm. But we should start calling it prayer day. Because okay. the Lord knows we need to pray about these people who are getting ready to say that they're the best qualified candidates that we have to lead us. Now, I shared with y'all earlier about the qualification that was needed for Matthias and Joseph Basabas and Justin. Mm -hmm. They only needed to be male and have been with Jesus since Jesus' ministry started. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice that the candidates that we're getting ready to choose from can say that they have been with Jesus since the beginning of their life? Yeah, yeah. Or the beginning of their new life. Because mm -hmm. if we're honest, all of us weren't with Jesus from the cradle. Amen. But there should be some evidence. There should be some proof in the pudding if we have claimed to have been with Jesus since our conversion. Yes. There should be something about us that people should be able to know that we have been and spent some time with Jesus. Thank you, God. If people can't tell that you hadn't been with that you've been with Jesus, maybe you hadn't been with him. Yeah, yeah. If people can't tell you know the Lord, maybe you don't know him. That's it. We have to be honest with ourselves because we know, if even if we don't know nothing else, we know that God knows. 
Yes. So let us get our hearts right. Let us go to God in prayer. Ask God if there's anything within us that shouldn't be. Take it out hey. and set yeah. us free. If there's anything that we are doing that we shouldn't be doing, touch our hearts so we can stop doing whatever it is that we shouldn't be doing. Yes. God knows. The Lord knows. And we can know too if, if we have the relationship with the Lord. That's it. That's it. Yes. So as we get ready to prepare for this week, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to even tell you who I voted for. Mm -hmm. But just like I said, if you know the Lord, there are certain things you know about people who know the Lord. If you know me, there are certain things you know about me. Mm -hmm. So the candidates that has been placed before us for this Tuesday, what I want us to do, if we hadn't already voted, I want us to pray. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. If you have already voted, I want us to pray. pray. Yes. If you don't vote, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I, I want us to pray. Amen. I want us to pray. pray. Yes, Lord. Prayer is our power. Yes, it is. It's our wonder power. It's our superpower. When we pray, things happen. Yes. When we pray, mountains are moved. Come on. Yes, yes. When we pray, our children behave better. Yes. yes when we pray, husband and wife love each other. Yes. yes when we pray, parents know how to parent better. When yes. we pray, our bosses become better bosses. When we yes. pray, we become better employees. When yes. we pray, we manage our finances better. When we pray, we eat better. When we pray, we love one another better. When we pray. Yes. When we pray, miracles happen. Yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but I still believe in miracles. Yes, Lord. I still believe in miracles. When we pray. Yes. Let's pray. Yes. 